West West show. All right, welcome everybody back to the MT Out the Clip podcast, the EOTC. My name is Cams. I'm here with the brother straight out of the West Auckland lady. What's up, bro? It's good, man. So good to see you, my man. <laughs> good to see you too, man. I'm in a different part of the house now, and I've got the the forest in the background here. Sick. Yeah, let's see. So... Backdrop, cool, man. <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, you know the drill, man. It's only just me and you for, for today's episode, but um, let's do some shoutouts. Thank you, man. Oh, bro. First shoutouts, bro, to my my oldest daughter, Nikita. Um, and another shoutout to um, the cousin, Yash. So Kira and Yash have been working on her rehabbing her leg to be able to go and play um, some football. And I think Kira left school in 2020. So it's been almost two and a half years. Yeah, so it's been two and a half years since she's actually picked the rugby ball up and played played a game of, of rugby and she managed to do it yesterday. I'm um, shout outs to the um my cousin um Davita Himona, who's um whose partner took Kira on under her wing up right over here at Watek um Watakari Rugby Club. So I'm gonna share a little ugly story, man. This is my shout outs. So Kira got wrecked out at her last training before we went down to to the Hut City from Makai. And to the head coach he just got the got them training together. I don't know why, like you know. And Kita's messaged the other coach and said, "Hey, don't feel comfortable training with some of Kamal Laws, you know, because they say some stuff like, you know, we're not allowed, man, you know." And all they come back with was, uh, "Hey, you know, it's just for the moment, we'll just let it be." And so they ended up playing a game of touch, and she's obviously running at someone backpedaling. So if someone's backpedaling, they mean they're offside. You know, you run to the person's offside. Now that person's probably fallen over. And she stepped him, and then she's got on the outside of a one-on-one with a guy. And the guy's seen the Fafinga fall, and he's decided to take it upon himself to grab her by the collar. So he's grabbed her by the collar and swung her around. And she's rang me crying, saying, Fuck, this guy just freaking grabbed me by the collar, man. Like, we're playing touch. So the coach has messaged her, Hey, if you got to expect some some of this argy shit, if you're going to get hard out. This is a training run, but this is just training. But it's just touch, you know? So the disheartening part about it is that, like, I was saying to to the head coach, Bro, my daughter's just a kid, man. She's come down and never played rugby at a club. And I told her a few of them, like, you know, that's two's a good guy, man. He played Bong Samoa, he's part of Auckland Rugby. And if he's got the parents, man, that's good. My assumption was that he was taking the women's team. But then her coach, I don't know, this Colette lady, I think it was Colette, Kololo, whatever, but a waste man, you had the opportunity to hold on to one of the best players. You ripped your team up yesterday. So shout out to Eden and shout out to Toots as well for accepting Keita at last last minute. They tried they tried to stand her down not to play. I mean she's only done preseason, she hasn't played. Like never had a foot in senior football, like rugby, like club level at all. They tried to stand her down. Toots was like, fuck it, come and fight for it, man, because if this you had the opportunity to try and have a, a, a player, a talented player like Keita play for them. And um yeah man, apparently she's fucking scored four tries on them, so she pretty much beat Eden by herself, so oh White Tech by herself. So that's the point in man, because you know you don't want the talent to move out, out west. You don't want to leave out west, but if it has to go to Central just to get uh, a comfortable environment, well that's where club rugby is at out west at the moment. So she tried to go play for White Matter, they didn't have a team. Thought about going to Messi, but the travel's a bit further, so she tried down here at White Tech and they dropped the ball on it and she now she's ended up at Eden, so I'm disappointed that she's not playing for the local club, but I mean, if they're going to give you some bullshit like that and try and make up a whole lot of excuses why the Prem women's are playing, training with the men, it's not good enough for you. So that's why our kids move from the from the West, man. But shout out to her and and, and, the, and the girls who called on from overseas and saw her post on her rugby post and seeing that she's playing again. It's been a long time coming. And um, yeah, I owe that mostly to probably Yash being able to put time into her. Um, another shout outs to um to um to others as well, man. Man, Gumpa's missed the inspiration, eh? Like every time I watch his videos, I'm like, man, I'm I'm inspired, but I'm still too mighty to go outside, eh? And it's killing me, it's killing me, bro. Like it's going on two weeks, bro. I haven't felt like this. So what I've probably realized, I probably had COVID, man. It was just you know too in denial to realize that fuck, man, my body's never felt like this before. But the last time I did feel sick like this was when I had COVID. And um, another shout outs to um to the old Thai and also to Dion man. So these guys, you know, they message me on Instagram. I crack up because sometimes conversations go back and forth 
It almost feels like the conversation goes back and forth, and then they turn into audios. So they just send you audio <laughs> of what they're trying to say. But it's mildly, eh? Because I like, I like how some people sound when they send you a voice audio. So shout outs to Dion and Ty, and also to um, my also Sonny. And my last shout outs to my bro, Elliot. Leah came around yesterday, and yeah, after Waka Ama, he's still paddling hard, eh? But um, he's been saying that it's been frustrating with um, the Saturday paddlers because he said that some of the Fafingas that come up there, are like, um, they want to come for the scenery, they don't want to paddle. So if you can imagine being in a, a competitive boat with like one guy who's competitive as fuck, like that guy is, and you got two normal calls, they just want to stop and just. Smile and take photos, and <laughs> so I always said to him, "Hey, yeah, let them test your patience, bro, because that's how that's how you as you get older, eh, the the resilience of being patient sort of helps you." Eh? <laughs> so now, this is my list of shout outs. But you, man, shout out, uh, yeah, man. I just want to make a shout out to um to join the night eh, for um for doing this piece and article for the magazine, but also for as uh. <laughs> He posted up on the chat like um, a result because um, I think the the Gallagher Cup started. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it was round would be round one. Yeah, first round yesterday. Yeah. So he 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 put through it on the poster uh, on the chat a result. Marist one hundred and fifteen to Atakiri three. Ooh. <laughs> and if you remember the on 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 the counter they were talking about how how Maris Got an upgrade because of that coach they got from uh, was that um, from Manica Rovers? Huh? Oh, okay. He's gone over there and he's taken some of the the Dominica guys over as well o- over to Maris. But it looks like that some of them are gone to ponies. Oh, so, from what I saw, from what hmm. I saw, and I was looking through their photos. I think I saw Fale Toy wearing a Ponsonby jersey, man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If that was the way to get some talent across, fuck. Good on the men. I hope they're giving them gas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's cool, that man. 115 to 3. Man. Hey, I think that's what happens, bro. You have to look after your players. Give on. Skeeter's going to go play for Eden and get on White Sex Women, bro. It's like, come on, man. You literally <laughs> had that talent sitting fucking two minutes drive down the road. Now she's going to fuck off to Eden. Hmm. That's the thing that annoys me. It's like, why? Go and help Uncle 2. He's going to be all good. And then they just, you know, they can't make you feel comfortable. And get over there and then get us on their team. I'm like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> like, I should be happy. But a little bit of me is like, Galo Fire. You know, this is our home. This is our mm-hmm. local club. And <laughs> my daughter's <laughs> going to play for another club and get on our local club, man. It's like, <laughs> see? Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, shout out to um, to Joe. And uh, oh, shout out to all the listeners of the Whispers Network and um, Tuning in to the Empty Out the Clip podcast. You can find us on Facebook. We've got a group page. It's a private group page. Empty Out the Clip Facebook page. Just go in, answer the free questions, and we'll let you in. You, this is your chance to put your articles up or comment that we can talk about on the podcast. All right, man. How's your week been? How's your week been? So it's been, yeah, it's been just been sleepy, bro. Shout out to my mate Knocker, man. Always making fun of me when he's going, oh, Mr. Strip. Calling me Mr. Strip, bro. Mr. Matty, like I'm Matty Babello. But another shout out to Sam Key man. He came through. I mean, I picked up my whiskey tea. But um, they had a good catch up with him. But yeah, now I've just been crook as fuck, man. Like, I haven't been able to do shit, eh? I probably spent a couple of hours just trying to get the um those garden bags. So I filled them up with all the branches and that. Needed to get picked up from the truck. But that's, that's all that I've had the energy to do, really. Um... Yeah, because the week's gone fast, bro. You know, the week goes fast when you're just lying in bed being sick. Um, shout out to my um, my daughter's boyfriend, Leroy, man. Fuck, he did a DIY. And it's funny, man, because I've only just shared what the garage looked like before, and he tagged me in a video of what it is now. But it's just the many spaces that, and the many transformations that the spaces had, now that they've turned it into a nice book of moya, it's just like, it's amazing, eh? So I haven't helped them touch anything in there bro and I've just I've just been watching from the sideline just like Galo I wish I can help you it's like I had gout then I had the flu and I've just been stuck inside man so I've been of no use to anyone didn't even go watch Keita's game but um now nah, I just even today bro like I thought man what day is it today I thought it was like Thursday or Friday <laughs> Thursday or Sunday like damn 
But I went for a job interview. So I went for a job interview. Yeah, I'm trying to pick up some inspiration from ours, man. I went to a job interview. And I hope I get the job, eh? Because it's only local, man. It's like 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes drive. But, yeah, like, I remember I went on CK and looked for 10 jobs within 10 kilometers. And, um, yeah, this one came up. I, I, I can't even remember applying for it. But, um, yeah, I think I, I made the old man laugh. He's the site manager. And um, the question on the questionnaire, and I was, uh, I'll be honest, bro, like, as a questionnaire, like, and I've said in a few panels we ask questions, but this was a questionnaire of maybe, like, 23 questions. And it got deep really fast, eh? Like, because on the second page, it said, do you have a reliable transportation? And I said, yeah. And then I go, okay. And then I go, yeah, I've got a Toyota, bro. And the old man laughed, the going and laughed. He goes, oh, dude, he took his glasses off. And he goes, well, I've got a Holden, because I'm a Holden, man. And then the team leader was started laughing. He goes, oh, Holden's here. He's got to push into the workshop. But while he said that, I said, oh, I'm a Holden, man. Fuck, i got an LS1 parked up at home. Bro, and the guy looked at me and he goes, like, I think this dude has been made for me, bro. Like, he seems to be ticking all the fucking boxes. And, and he had a good laugh, eh? <laughs> but then the team leader took me outside and told me, bro, you know, you gotta, you gotta, I'll be honest, like, it's, it, was, it was dry, but it was just real muddy, being working in the timber yard. And he said, oh, it's, it's one of those things, bro. I said, bro, I've worked indoors for the last 18 years. Fucking, I'll happily fucking lie down on this shit. Like, you know, that's how much I want a career change. But he's a 23 year old, he's a, um, a yardsman, t- a team leader. And what I like about what they're trying to do is they're trying to employ enough people so when one person's in the way, it doesn't stress the whole team out. And then they asked me something like, because like, I was getting pretty deep real fast. Was they go, is there anything you want to share with us that you probably haven't shared with anyone? Oh, like, those questions. <laughs> yeah, bro. Then I told them, sure, okay. Yeah, okay, fuck, in the last two years, I've put on so much weight. That I thought to myself, at my last job, fuck, I might die there, you know? Mm. Right. And then the guy got to the, take the glasses off again, and he looked at the team leader, and he goes, I'll oh, tell him, he goes, oh, bro, you saying that? And he goes, I'll be honest, we have a team leader, or oh, we have a team and a group chat, and a, um, and a work, a work-based biggest loser that we do every, 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 every three or four months. And that's to help keep the guys engaged and challenged, and, you know, if we put on a feed or we put on a, a couple of drinks, the guys are real consistent about posting because every time you post consistently and if you come if you post consistently for the month fuck the company will write you a 250 dollar check and a prezi card so they'll tell you fuck, you're doing awesome but when i heard that i was like <laughs> please lord you can hear my prayer just can i have the job over here because i'll fucking run to work bro it's that close you know i'll ride my bike but man and sorry that sounds like the opposite to your old job eh? oh sorry no, like oh, the benefits see like no benefits, benefits see <laughs> bro, what I appreciate them saying to me was like, fuck, if you would have booked that coke, and what, did they give you like a staff credit? Okay, bro, the only thing I ever ordered was fucking water. <laughs> and they were like, fucking that shit, okay, bro, and that shit's like the fucking worst struggle on this earth, bro. Fucking anything related to sugar, eh? Mm. And they both said, yeah, you're absolutely right, man. Like, fucking sugar's fucking worse than any drug you can take, eh? Mm. And I loved it. They were just honest like that. But I was like, bro, I hope I get that job, man. But even if you want me to clean the toilets, bro, fuck. This is nice and close. It's a different career. And I just love the fact that the guy was like, bro, even if we were to, like, train you up driving a rig, like, would you be keen? I'll okay. go, brother, I'm fucking rocket man. Put me anywhere, bro. Fuck, I'll do that job. I'll do it. If no one wants to do it, I'll do it. Like, that's how keen I am to work here. Mm. So hopefully, oh, maybe nice. they give me a call or, like, shortlist me. Mm. But yeah, I like I like it how they can ask you questions like that. Hey, eh? like if I ring your last employer, what do you think they'll say? I was like, bro, fifty bucks. The guy's gonna tell you he's gonna say, oh, I wish he didn't leave. And they're like, oh, you're pretty confident. Okay, not confident, bro. I'm that guy. Fuck, I'm Rocket Man. That, call me that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you need the points. If I was to kick that winning goal at the last World Cup, I would have I would have got the kick ever. Hey, you remind me. That story reminded me of especially the um the sugar thing for cook. Did you see that video of um a Christian Ronaldo? How he had that interview, uh, had the Coke bottle. The bottles, always moves the bottles out of the way. Move the Coke out of the way. And put the water yeah. in there. <laughs> Good on him, dude. Good on him, dude. He's like, oh, that's bad. That shit's bad for you. Oh, nice, bro. Nice. Yeah, hope, hopefully you get that job, eh? Yeah, no, it's good to have you got your inspiration through Abs. Because, man, I'll be watching this. I want to tell Abs, you know, if, if you're listening, bro, no more um New Zealand posts, please. There's an old, there's a new, there's a new chapter for you, new Shower. chapter for you, like, 
put, just don't worry about those old uh those old Auckland uh training videos you had last year, man. <laughs> just you know, you open the new chapter, man, just do some Australia stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. Um yeah, it was a short week, eh? Because Monday was holiday, so but man, no one told me it was a short week because my week was long at work, eh? Like fuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, man. If I had one more day, I would have just Quite fell asleep, man. <laughs> fell asleep in the office. Wow. But that, man, um, yeah, it just went fast. It went so fast. Um, but it didn't feel like it. But then, yeah, just, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, my my life right now, especially the last few couple of months, been like, oh, especially since I came back from holidays, Christmas holidays, it's been like um, routines, been like clockwork, eh? Yeah. I wake up, go to work, come back, eat, watch TV, repeat. You know, mm. <laughs> and I think because like man, we haven't went out, we haven't been out like f- for a while, and I think it's all it's got to do with the not wanting to spend any money. You know, oh yeah, like we're, we're trying to save up and find ourselves not doing anything. Mm. You know, and it sucks because we used to do stuff and save up at the same time. Yeah, you know, it's like a thing we gotta pick and choose now mm. so i don't like that luxury eh? i like how it was before how you can do both but now you gotta make some sacrifices man and i think that's what we're trying to do but yeah man it's just a routine i'm just happy that you know i can write for the magazine and that takes my time and at night do some editing and that you know yeah um and just watch a movie in between so so yeah so just the same old same old shit just go work come back do the network stuff yesterday what did we do didn't do anything stay at home went to the bakery got some breakfast for the family and i watched i think i watched i watched some movies today on tv today though we woke up in the morning and um we took the kids to the movies so we went to watch that uh that godzilla and king kong yep that godzilla king kong film it's crazy. Eh? I'll probably bring it up on the um, what have we been watching? But I'll bring that up on on that on that segment. But no, man, just same old, same old. Hmm. Yeah. Man, sounds like you've been um. So you haven't done any um interviews for the Back of the Rifle Five? Nah, no? I haven't had I haven't had the chance to um to think about it. Eh? You yeah. know, it's kind of. I'm kind of worried about it at the same time because I don't want it to like I don't want a month to go past and it hasn't been in any, any guess yeah so man I better do something about it I think after the issue of this magazine is out then I'll get down and and try to get some guests in but yeah I think it's going to be a case of maybe start getting some old guests I had before to come, to come back yeah some yeah, yarn, yeah. Eh? yeah just you know just just keep it going yeah yeah but yeah, man, nah. But nah, that's me. That's me for the week. <laughs> mm. All right, Luz, Um, Yeah, so we were talking about it before we jumped on the mics, but there were, hasn't been much news lately to talk about. But we did hear some more talk about the Manu Samuel, new coach, um, Manu Shoga, and not about him. Not about him especially, but just about the whole process around how how Manu Samoa got the coaching and replaced Selada Mapusua and and we and and Joey read about it on the magazine like a while ago about the the coaching transition that happened with Manu Samoa posting on Facebook advertising for a new coach. You know, yeah. knowing that Selada Mapusua's contract finishes at the end of this year. But probably not telling them they were going to advertise they just did it anyway they just threw it on facebook and advertised for a new coaching position and so i think that took say lala by surprise and like it's an article anyway on the last on the last magazine but you can, you can also find it online but um i think so following on onto that we got some reactions right we got some reactions with my Mah- Mah- becoming the new monosamo coach and the way he got chosen as the coach and we got some reactions by from Eliotza 
Um, he came on his podcast, talked about it. He had an interesting take, but it came. And then Lima Sabonga, he wrote an he wrote an he wrote he had an interview, and New Zealand Herald wrote about the interview. Um, I think last week, just said how disappointed Lima Sabonga was with the way the the way the process was to appoint a new coach for Mano Samo and how sort of he called it like. It was pretty sad how they treated Sir Alan Mapso because he thought that you know he was doing a good job in terms of like getting some guys, some ex All Blacks guys or ex guys to come back to play for Samoa to put on the blue jersey, you know, yeah. and to, to make the team a bit more experienced and you know, and he said that because he sort of said because of the whole process of the way um, it happened that these guys won't play for Samoa anymore. Because they they, he was criticizing the higher ups. He was criticizing Samoa, the the Manu Samoa, um, uh, the Samoa Rugby Union board. He was criticizing the, um, you know, the managers and all that. How yeah. they they treated um, Mapusu and how they did the the process. And I think when you watch that um, podcast with um, Eliotza, he was talking about how, you know, it's like if you look at the pattern of the Manu Samoa coaches over the years in history. They will almost change the coach every after every World Cup. When, yeah. when they when they lose a World Cup, they always change the coach straight away. And he he thought was well, maybe you, you should let the coaches fail because so when they have a second chance, they can l- probably learn from their mistakes the first time around. If you keep changing the coaches every yeah. single World Cup, you're sort of going back to square one every single every single time. Yeah, you know, so that was his sort of like his thing. take on it. Yeah, his his take on it. Um. But then, you know, we, then some Observer, they wrote an article, opinion piece that um, we read just before we jumped on the mics. And their take was interesting because they, they were on the perspective of Samoa itself. Like, mm. like we want to bring up, and, and that was the decision why, that, and that was part of the decision to make Henry the head coach because he has got his academy in Samoa. He lives in Samoa. He's from Samoa. Um, yeah. And they want to go to the direction where they want to bring up local players, yeah, guys from the island, bring them up, right? And and Mahonry will be the best guy suited moving forward, going into that direction, you know. And and it was interesting the when we read the um, Osama Observer opinion, they were talking about how you know, all, all due respect to Lima Sabwanga, but we we probably don't want ex players to not ex, ex All Blacks or ex ex Wallabies wanting to end their careers in Samoa. You know, because yeah. where were you when you chose when at your peak, you chose the the country of, of your birth to play for rather than coming back home yeah. and play for your 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 parents' country, you know? So that was sort of like their like um their counterpoint mm. to what Limo was saying. So no, it's all interesting, eh? It's all interesting. It's all I think as a fan, for me, I just want our team to win. Yeah, you know, and how how we get there, to me it doesn't matter. But also, I it's sort of like I'm I'm stuck in the middle because I'm like, I agree with both sides because I agree with you know bringing the old heads to come back to Samoa to get a chance to play for their heritage, they get a chance to play for their parents, right? Yeah. Even though you're born in New Zealand or Australia, but also giving back your experience to Samoa as well, mm. you know. And I also yeah, agree with right. in the perspective of Samoa, like bring up the locals. Bring up the the local players because you need to. Maybe there needs to be a balance. But nah, it's all interesting. It's all interesting. How how are you how are you feeling about all of this at the, and what's happened? Oh, my opinions and my thoughts have never changed, Sus, and I agree with you hundred percent, man. We we're, we're Samoa at heart by the folk. Uh, and I've never I've never liked every, everything that the New Zealand rugby union has ever done. To our players and our players of someone heritage right from the get go, man. Um, but in terms of what the article was saying, um, I feel like because apart from what Mahanrae's done in the last what ten years with the development of um, rugby players and in terms of like what the professional athlete would look like if you were a rugby player, like match that against anything else that's happened in, in Samoa in the last 20 years there's nothing been, there's nothing like it and the fact that Mahanari's 
teaching the kids in Samoan how to what these terms are because it's not foreign to them, right? And I think Samoa breeds enough talent to take take it to the world world stage, like take those players to the world stage and on any level because that's just investment and just sh- a small progress. But with the target in mind, they're like, if we're going to the worlds, like the um, IRB sevens, or if we're going to the um, if we're going to the Olympic Games, we can do it. I mean, look at Fiji. The Fiji's had no outside resources and like some of the best teams that they've ever taken to the Worlds. It's just been naturally bred on home soil without any 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 help from our side. It's possible. So I understand what they mean by not having that outside influence, like say from the guys who, who won't be picked for the All Blacks again. I get that. But in saying that, when that All Black um, experience comes to the fold. Fuck it, only enhances what Samoa could be. You know what I mean? And like, and like, like you said, man, we trying to win by all means possible. If it means we have to ask some of these guys to come back, like come out of almost retirement, because some of the you know you look at the English World Cup team that won when when was it Johnson won? The average age was thirty four, man. Like, are you saying that this last World Cup that um, Selena Mapasua took his team? On average, couldn't have a, they didn't have another World Cup team in them. They probably do, man. But imagine now that Adi's not on the New Zealand Rugby Union list, whether he could go play another World Cup. Bro, his body would be preserved playing in Japan. They, those guys didn't even make tackles. Take Mosse to Ali, for example. He was a prime example. When the Crusaders were going to re-sign him and the All Blacks didn't want him, and he went to Japan, he came back, he's playing fucking local f- football, man. He's still playing Gallagher Shield football, and he's still smashing guys. And he's, well, he's almost, he's well into his 40s. So it's possible, man. There's no comparison in, in terms of the physicality that Super Rugby has in, in compared to what's in Japan. And by far, no, we, we, we still, we just need to get the mixture right, eh? And... Like like I said, like when we spoke earlier, like man, to be fair, man, every every Samoan kid that's born in New Zealand, sadly we don't wake up and then and I'm speaking for myself. Sadly, I didn't wake up saying I want to play for the Manu, because the memories I had were of Samoa players playing for the All Blacks, like Vanga Tungamala. He was the reason. Michael Jones, they were the reasons why I wanted to wear an All Black jersey because those are Samoan players, and that's it. But now they're given that that's a career and it's and it's a pain career. You gotta ask yourself: these Samoan guys that are born around the world who have Samoan blood, both sides, they both their parents and their grandparents. Unfortunately, the the dollar in value to follow love it seems a lot better outside of Samoa because how much they can contribute, and that's the fact. And that's and that's just being honest, man. So when we get it right and and, and we can say, oh man, you know what? They're not going to pass for the World Cup, but if you can find your own way, well, it doesn't sound attractive to all all fees and all fares and accommodation paid. It's, it's sort of like a no-brainer, man. And only, only a, a small percentage of those players can afford to say that, you know, especially when they when they know they're going to the World Cup and they won't be getting paid by their club. There's only a handful of guys on that sort of money, you know. That's the sad, that's the sad reality about being Samoa and playing for the, for the Boys in Blue, man. Which is um something that people f- forget, uh. People forget it. Like we wanna win, but then look what these boys sacrificed to go and play for the for the blue jersey, man. The club, the 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 day to day bills, you know. And what probably what the luck of people was willing to pay them is probably not enough to even pay for their for their fears. And that's the truth, man, you know. It's not it's not it's not a secret, it's 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 all public news and it's everyone should know. If you look at a rugby all around the world, and you and you you were to pick one sort of player that is dominant all around the world, you'll one hundred percent pick the Pacific Islanders, you know, around the world, and it's been it's been proven. Now, a lot of these players come from the best resources, the best resources in, in New Zealand, with the All Blacks, um, Australia. Well. well with the Wallabies, all these resource systems that make them superstars, right? But they're still Polynesian, they're still Pacific Islanders. 
So when I think about bringing up local players, that's that's like that's like home base. That's like home. That's like where we'll, where the essence of being the Pacific Islanders from, right? Yeah. I mean, if, if you're talking about the race that's dominant in in the sport of rugby, it's the Pacific Islanders. So what better place to find these players in the islands itself? Oh, right there. Really, really. The only difference is there's no the, the resources aren't there. The resources they don't have the money, like you said, like Australia or New Zealand, obviously. So, I think if you're trying to, I think what someone needs to do, if they want to go the the local route, it's probably picking the fresh apple from the tree, you know. But yep. making sure that that player or person builds up to be a superstar like Adi Sevilla or or John Olomu or you know, all these superstars that have come through the New Zealand system, you know, or get come through the system of Samoa. If they're good enough, then New Zealand will pick them. They'll grab them. <laughs> they'll go and grab them for for themselves, you know, via Moana Pacifico or something. I don't know, but Oops, that's just my opinion. But... Blueprint. Take the Paramount <laughs> Blueprint. Take the Paramount Blueprint. We've done <laughs> it, man. We, we, yeah. We're doing guys. We work in the Omaha fucking... We turn them into NRL stars, superstars overnight, man. Michael Sivo, <laughs> Simi Trailer, mm. they guys who had, had no idea what the game was. Pick up the right people, fucking killing it. That that's an example, man. Like if if a, if a Parramatta League club can do it, Bruce Samoa can do it, man. They just need to get the they just need to get it right, you know. Mm. You can't be promising a whole lot of stuff and nothing comes to it, you know. He's got to teach them hard work. It's got to be. It's going to be hard. The road's going to be hard. There's no promises, and it's all on you, man. That's it. But maybe the so maybe the difference is that you know instead of us because because you have to admit like when they named when they first named Lima Sapong in the squad, first thing you thought, oh, wow, they changed the rules. It's working. We got X All Black, and that automatically translates to you know we got a good team automatically yeah you know like the same thing we felt when we back in in the 90s when when michael jones and the all those guys got picked for the the monosal more team and we did beat we and then we beat wales you know mm. those times so you know there's there's that excitement but that's because we see these players play all the time yeah you know when i talked about the the new zealand the new zealand resources we watching them playing those resources every single weekend super rugby yeah. and npc we see them all the time so when they make the all blacks we see them playing all four blacks you know so we already got that on the man like knowing that they're a good player if you can make the all blacks man you can make it any any team sort of thing and it doesn't matter if you're past your prime you still got the experience as all black yeah. it's automatic for us you know but i think with the with the fear for us is not knowing who these local players are because we, we never see them there's no like competition and there's no competition in in Samoa where it's, it's televised you know they've got the the village yeah, games yeah, but it's yeah, not yeah. televised we don't see these players you know yeah. like before Miracle came on the scene with Moana we don't know who he was you know mm. so but I think we just got to need to do we just need to trust the process do we need to just trust the process where where the Manu Samoa Rugby Union has taken if they're saying look look we want we want to bring up our, our local guys you know, we if if Samuel, if that guy that wrote the Samuel Observer article, if his opinion piece is if he's saying that this is the direction where we're going because we don't want any influence from NZ players. Yeah. yeah. Or don't want any guys that, that chose New Zealand or Australia first before yeah. they chose Samuel and only come to Samuel at the end of their sort of careers. You know? Take advantage does, of the of the of the eligibility rules. Yeah. How does that look on Yeah, how on, does that look? On paper and then on the field? Eh? Yeah, so yeah, it's a complicated thing because if you talk about hey, we just want the best players every every who's available, like like say he on the article he criticised well what what if Adi Sevier decided to play for for Samoa, how's yeah. that gonna look? Well, if if you want to win, like argument is okay, if if there's a, if you look at the if you look at the list of names who's available for Mano Samoa that year or that Rugby World Cup year. Don't you want the best players on that list, no matter where they're from? Yeah. This is, I don't know, it's opinion, sir. That's mm. the sad part. It's opinion. 
but it feels like that article is written on the back of maybe because Sapuanga had something to say as a player, but he came late to the fold. Uh, mm. He's not a Samoan homegrown player and he's shown at the World Cup. Maybe I feel like that that, that article was sort of coming at him like that. Mm. Which is a sad, sad way to look at it, eh? Because, like, bro, the Tosa more made history at the Rugby League World Cup. There were no homegrown players there. Yet these guys fly the flag every bloody week, putting their bodies on the line. Heritage round, bro, they're fucking throwing the flag up. Everyone knows. They're actually partying, they're even playing 6 8 5 to the world. Like, why are we getting better over something that's, hey, it's, it's the Samoa Lakapi that's got the. Got the, got the issues of not being able to keep a coach through and after a World Cup. So to sort of put it like that, if I was a like a current player reading an article like that, it would make me question. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not make myself available if that's how some people feel back home. You know, mm. because man, if I if I knew I had another like if you think about it, it was a playing a, a playing career for the World Cup. Eight games, huh? Is it eight games if he's making to the final? If that, bro, every 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 horse has two or three runs in it, man. Like you know, if it goes to a race, they got two or three games in it, man. The saddest part is like if, if we start thinking like certain people, like oh no, nah, we don't want them because they've gone and dipped their foot over there. It's like nah, we want to have the best team on the day and on paper, but to get the result that we want, we just want to win, man. But. Whether we get a fair go at it would be a whole different conversation, man. But what I'm saying is like, bro, even if Michael Jones was in his 50s, was, fuck, he'd still be good for a one game, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Remember, Alfie Langer did it. 36 years old. Game three, we needed the win, man. Bro, Wayne Bennett was tapped out. He was like, sorry, I can't ask anyone else. Bro, he bought the Palangi guy, the short, <laughs> small Palangi guy, came down to Suncorp Stadium, ripped shit up. Game in the bag, man. That's what I mean. Like every 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 league player's got one or two games in them, man. And for the mm. World Cup, bro, you couldn't go past all the all the ABs of Simon Hurts that have you know sort of gone on, moved on from New Zealand Rugby Union, man. It's just too it's too good to pass down nails, you know. Mm. It would be wrong, man. He's saying that if Christian Cullen was thirty four years old now, and they said, <laughs> Nah, we don't want him. <laughs> Fuck, shut up. <laughs> just <laughs> fuck him, man. He's got a World Cup final on him, you know? Mm. It'll be like that, Us. Oh, well, if it was John Lemo. Oh, exactly. John Lemo for, exactly, yeah. Oh, no, we don't for want Tonga. For well, Tonga, you know? Exactly, bro. Mm. Well, how about a guy like, if, say, if, 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 if Tonga had the same problem, say if it was a guy like um, like Piatel, like Charles Piatel. He only played the World Cup for, what, one year? Yeah. And he chose the he chose to support his family by taking the money overseas. Like, if he goes back to Tonga, which he did, like, how are they, how are they going to, how do they treat these players? Like, yeah, Israel Falau's back. Um, Malachi Fikitoa is back. You know, whole whole bunch of them came, and came team, back. Huh? And that team on paper was <laughs> was amazing, man. You know, mm. and, but that to simply all that all that showed is that telling that they just needed more time together. You mm. know, there's no point arriving the day before the game, haven't had a team run. You know, you need a hit up, man. You can't get to a World Cup. And only two guys have had a had like a whole eighty minutes together. Like that's not that's not the way you prepare for the World Cup, man. You gotta be like it, it's gotta be, you gotta have like um the chemistry's gotta be there, eh? Mm. You gotta know if I'm gonna do those no look passes and you're gonna expect someone there. Like that's that's what the Penrith boys do so well. Is that they just been so used to playing outside each other, like that's why they just get a they just grow a third leg when they need it, eh? Mm. I think, as I mentioned before, as a fan, you know, we just want the, the team to win. And as a fan, I think, you know, you just want the best players to be in the team at the time of the World Cup, right? Oh, so, so I think Lima Sabonga alluded to in his in his interview that some of the players won't trust Samoa now because of how they treated um, yeah. um, Seilala. Because a lot of them... Because I think he was talking about how he, as well as a good coach, he's a good manager. I mean, Samoa has the problem of of you know having these overseas players come in and and try to juggle local talent as well and yeah. so and with the limited resources that 
that Samoa Rugby has with the lack of money and the lack of funds and all that kind of stuff. Oh, no. It seems like um, Serrala was able to manage all of that. He was good at managing all that. Yeah. And just to get the best out of the players, the best out of the team. Um, and apparently he was he was really good, you know? And um, so yeah. so because of that, what what Lima alluded, alluded to was that now that he's gone, that a lot of the players won't even come back now. You know, it seems to be like, oh, okay, there's an agenda here. I think it's you know? I think it's, <laughs> to be honest, was, how did I think about it? You just said it again. I think it's just that Highlanders are support for us also, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's nothing else to it. It's just because he's Highland, this man, you know? He's <laughs> reached out to a Highlander, bro. And that could have been the reason, like, the telling of why Lima actually said, I'll come and play. Mm. So, so he saw that, oh, yeah. He said, I was the, got, the, got the head job. Fuck, mm. now see, we'll see what's the go, you know? And he probably said it to him well before, man. If I ever got the opportunity and you were head coach, I'm there. Yeah. And probably hard him to his word, you know? <laughs> yeah, so. I don't think that's good for anything. Yeah. What he said. Like, guys don't want him to come play. Yeah, no. Nah. And then our old mate, what's his name? Uh, what's, his, what's the guy? Um, Elijah. Elijah Nico, he posted up. He said, I told you guys, like, man, there's corruption, <laughs> corruption up there and yeah. up at the top there. But I think, like, for our old Mahonore, like, for him to sit there, like, I don't believe he'll take us backwards, man. Like, he like, why like why would you go and put put the organization that you're supposedly representing now, like it's not just the organization, it's all of Samoa. Why would you put the out like that? Go come on TV and say this is what was happening, and then you earn the home job, the, the head job. He would have he would have seriously fought hard about taking it on first if that change hadn't come, you know. So I don't believe he's gonna take us backwards, man. Mm. And bro, we can only just wish him the best, bro. Like. This is where you want Ari to be going like, Sully, let me know. Like, that's what I'm waiting for, you know? <laughs> Even if bus is like, Holly, I heard you reached out to my bro, fuck, I'm keen. Bro, I'll be like, yo, this will be a team worth considering now, you know? And I would be surprised if they, they had some like, Pacific Rim fixtures that, bro, these are going to be some good games, man. Mm. Yeah, because I think the, the Pacific Cup is different now, eh? Yeah. Different format now. Man, that, that conversation changes every year. Can't keep up with it. Next man Australia's in it, next man they're not. Australian A. Well, we've got that Australia A team that played. Um, but in the, the grounds were freaking like cricket grounds, man. But they, they sent some. <laughs> they, they sent an a informed team. Like mm. that. Um, was it Daniela Tupo whenever he played in their game? Fuck. I remember that. But yeah, it was good. And it was good all round as well. You know, it was running rugby. It wasn't boring. But just mm. the, okay, the score lines didn't blow up, you know? Yeah. No, it's interesting. Interesting what's going on over there. A lot of drama, eh? A lot of drama. Yeah. Man. Let's move on. Move on. <laughs> but now it'll be good to see what, what happens. I think it's good in the long run, eh? It's good for the long run of, of Samoa rugby, it looks like. But they have to do something about this. I don't agree with the changing of the guard every time. Every time they lose a World Cup. Yeah. You know, I think you got to stick. With, I, I agree with what Eliotta said. Like, you know, if if you let the coach fail and keep him on, he's going to try and learn from those mistakes. That's when you fire him if he gets a, doesn't get yeah. it done the next time around. No. You got to you gotta, you gotta let them fail. He was right. Look at um, Graham Henry. When he lost that time, huh? I think they yeah. all backs got eliminated in the in the quarterfinals, huh? Yeah, that's the France loss. Yeah, the France loss. Yeah. When they're wearing the um And I don't think the I don't uniform. know what image is more funny was the fact that you see all of their starting lineup like no following on the bench. <laughs> 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 and they go, hey mate, quarterfinals, quarterfinals. <laughs> I mean, I remember seeing looking at them and be like, Fuck man, I'm a waste of tech player money right there, man. Fuck. They even have their best team on the field. Yeah. That's how big headed New Zealand was, eh? <laughs> yeah, we can win without then um Kalaha and then Karate all oh, good. <laughs> mm. But you know, they did what was right. They kept um Graham Henry on and he, yeah. he did learn from his mistakes, they they won at the next World Cup, so <laughs> Alright, uh, since we're talking about sport, 
you put up a little video from the NRL. I think it was the um, hip drop, eh? It was hip yeah. drop on your team. Oof. Oof, this is why I'm saying, bro. <laughs> it's good to start watching after round 10. And it's good how the NRL, as an organization, they sort out all the bullshit. Like with these, these tackles. Like that drop on the back of the leg, that's an intention, eh? The intention to pull the player. But, man, the guy, like, if he's going to do it, like, in this day and age, he should get stood down, man, for the month. Because, bro, look at the injury. Like, the injury, like, anything on an Achilles, calf muscle, ankle, fuck, it's going to take ages to come back from one of those, you know? They say your Achilles is like your second heart, man. The amount of blood they pump through your Achilles is unreal. So when you, mm. when you like, tear it, or it's anything near the calf, bro, it's like you have to teach yourself how to run again. So, no, nah, you know, good on the NRL for coming up with these heavy or harsh, you know, early rounds because then it stomps out all the bullshit when you start heading into the finals 40. Mm. But, like, the guy knew, like, bro, your intention was to pull the guy down, let go of the jersey, and just wrap your arms around his legs. But if your hold on to his jersey, then you go fucking sit on the back of his leg. Nah, that's, that's intentional, man. Like, there's no malice or anything all that shit this is like that's just a poor shit tackle you know what's gonna happen and the worst thing did happen so yeah that's why it's really interesting after watching round 10 that's the after the magic round that's that's when you go watch it again eh? man there's a whole bunch of hi hi eh? a whole yeah, bunch bro. of a whole bunch of send-offs and you posted know. up you posted up the other game with um the bulldogs and um and the roosters <laughs> In, in the video you put up was when Dom Young got sent off for a forum. Forum on um on Mini, I think. Yeah, bro. But like again, eh? It's like I oh, think tough. we saw that that Isaac Tango on um on Reese Walsh. It's the same thing, man. If you're if you're coming in too high, your point of context obviously gonna be high. Like if you're if you know, unless you're like below the guy's chest. That's the only time you're ever gonna stick a tackle around around the chest and and lower. But this guy is obviously upright. I don't know what he thought he was gonna do. Like, how do you explain it? It's just shit that the you know the judiciary takes into account, like all your previous tackles and your record for the last eighteen you know months, all of that shit, you know. But that there was just poor tackle tech straight off the bat, man. It was never it was never gonna be safe, mm. you know. So the Roosters had two HIAs, um, and I think um, it, was, it was Tedesco, he went off for HIA at the beginning, and they had to activate their 18th man, and do you know who it was? It was Michael Jennings. Yeah, bro, crack up, eh? 30, is he 35 years old or something? Man, who knows, bro? <laughs> All I saw was the after-match photo. Yeah. After-match photo with, with um, Sweetie, yeah. With the grey hairs. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> But good on him, bro. Like, mm. man, he's had a hard, he's had a hard career, man. Like Michael Jennings, you remember, bro? He, he, he remember he scored that try, and everyone thought it was someone else that scored that that winner in game two. It was a couple, like maybe like four years ago. Mm. Like, like that's how heavy he was into the fold of things, eh? And um, I remember he's the only guy to ever get picked for state of origin out of reserve grade for this oh, yeah. Bro, like you know that guy is fucking heavy hitter, man. Even, even, even he's been one of those players like um, who was always gonna put Tonga first, MMT first. But nah, yeah, that tackle, bro, was yeah. What did someone put in the comments? I laugh at the jerseys, eh? <laughs> what does Simon put up? He's more concerned about the 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 jerseys, <laughs> the whole comedians, everyone ripping them, eh? <laughs> Sorry. But no, nah, yeah, like that. Yeah, you don't have to be a a rugby guru to realize that if you come in and like that quick, as high as you did, like that's not gonna end well. Like you know, that's one of those. I'll oh, beat you something. He's gone, but to get sent off, wow. Oh, mm. That's he had it coming, eh? Uh, speaking about Simon, he put up another post. He put up. A video of Cameron Barry. I think he looks like he's on, he's on the podcast, eh? But he's talking about um, he's talking about Joseph Parker and what he reckons. It sounds like he's talking about 
how Joseph Parker should be should calm down he or something. Like he's talking about his kids and he's getting old and all that kind of stuff. I assume I haven't seen the whole whole video clip. I don't know what the question was, but he's talking about how he thinks Joseph should end his career. Eh? And then, well, and then, but then uh, the la- part I laughed at was was Simon's comment. He goes, "Shut the fuck up and give says, David money back." <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck up and give David's money back. <laughs> well, guys, you thoughts on that one? Kevin Barry went to the Olympic Games and he beat Evander Holyfield. Mm-hmm. And won a silver medal? Was it a silver medal or the bronze medal? But fucking... Hey, you went to knock this clown out. It was just one of those after the bow, boom, and the punch landed, and then they got the, the bronze medal. Oh. Um, who got the gold in that one? Who got the gold? I'm not too sure. I don't think Kevin did, though. I think he mm. maybe got a silver. He made the final. Something like that. <laughs> but... The fact that Duco went and found, you know, went and found Joe Parker as the next up and coming heavyweight champ of the world, right? And then they go and get this poor girl to, to train him. Like, <laughs> man, it was public high, you know, all the stuff that happened between Dave and him. And like, I think not long after that, Dave and um, Bina split. But the fact that this guy could keep a straight face, you know? Cause bro, that guy, that that shit was frowned upon in the community. Eh? Like, but this guy really took Dave to the cleanest man. Took heaps of his stuff, eh? You know, mm. a lot of stuff, man. A lot of fucking dodgy ass signings and agreements and stuff. Broken contract. Wow, well, like I've said to you many times, those bro. I just I don't connect you by luggies when it comes to stuff like this, man. Like, if he's trying to give me advice about. Finance and all the rest of it. Nah, man, you know, his hands might seem clean, but they still stick on shit, bro. Still stained, eh? <laughs> still stained, man. <laughs> and um, I think it's big of Dave to to say he forgives him, but mm. you know, it'd be big of Kevin to show up to Dave's house, sir. Huh? That Dave's chucked the ball in that court and said, "Oh, he knows where I live. You know, we st- we haven't moved. He knows where my gym is. You know." It's just, but nah, fuck out in the house. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, him and him and the Lord can talk about it on Judgment Day, man. <laughs> yeah, I think if you, if you're ever gonna put Kevin Barry on your podcast, you gotta get down to nitty gritty, man. Ask him the real straight fucking up, real dude. questions, man. Like, where's David's money, man? Fuck, <laughs> shut up. I don't hear your opinion on Joseph Parker, but that ship sailed, bro. Oh, Leo. I there's some shit to resolve, man. Let's straight. In for the... What happened to the island? What, what did you do to the island? <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you, do you believe that you're possibly the reason why Pina and Dave split up because of all the bullshit you told Dave that it was happening? No. <laughs> what do you think? Sorry. Shit. Okay. Uh, got anything else on there? I'm just looking at the uh, page. Um, just quickly, drive, really. quickly. play there. They're all fair buckles, eh? Are they? Jeez, man, I don't know why the world is doing this shit, man. Wait, let's talk about this. So, so, you know, I'll, I'll also have it. He posted up a video on... Looks like he's a WWE guy, eh? Is it Austin Ferry? Is he? Is he a wrestler? Anyway, um, you know how people put their phones at the gym? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To record themselves at the gym. And he's put it on the ground, looking up when he's doing his weights. And some dude walks past the camera. He gets upset and tells that guy off. Yeah. So we actually got a bit of a... We actually got a bit of a um, response here from the comments, eh? So, so Simon jumps on and he goes, The no-brainer here. Anyone can walk whatever path they want in the gym. They don't need to accommodate people with cameras. If you film in the gym, you actually need to accommodate everyone else and be polite and let those close by know that they might be filmed in the background. Fuck Austin. Body slam him and superfly snook at him off the top rope if he spoke to me like that. Yeah. 
and the entire came in and he goes, for these few pokos who who the hell walks into a gym looking at the floor? Some people just take these dramas too far, especially when you know most are looking at themselves in the mirror 100% of the time or doing those <laughs> moi, <laughs> those moi koro ones. Well, what's funny is I get this at the gym all the time. If I ever see anyone filming, that's an uh, invitation for me to photobomb in the back with my MJ moves. <laughs> Now, you know me, man. I don't hardly go to any gyms, man. So I don't know what the culture is with the cameras in there. I know everyone does it. Everyone has cameras. Oh, actually, there was a time when I was out there at Westside Fitness. He put his camera to film himself. <laughs> but it was in the pathway of, of me. We were doing yeah. those, um, those bear crawls, right? Yeah. And I was in the camera. I felt uncomfortable. Away. It's like, yeah. fuck. I, I was, can you just delete that? Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I'm in the shop, man. Yeah, I think it's insensitive. I like to bring the camera sometimes. Mm. It's not too bad when it's back, far back that it's on everyone. But I mean, if it's if it's meant to get you and whoever, huh, but it's on you, Cavs. Really, that's this. Really, <laughs> what did I say? Did I ask? Okay. Because, <laughs> like, you know, you have your, your moments where you feel like you just want to die, eh? mm. <laughs> and there's someone's putting it all on camera. Fuck, yeah. I don't want to be seen. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think you got to put it... Yeah, I don't know what that etiquette is. But, you know, you, you put the camera, like, close to so no one can walk past. Or, But if someone walks past, obviously there's a, a wallet there. So people can walk past. Don't get angry if someone walks past. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I crack up at this Balingi guy because I think his whole... What's it? Joey Swole. His whole... YouTube channel and all his reels is dedicated to this particular subject, man. And he breaks it down, mate. I'm like, oh, shit. oh yeah. So he's got the university of um, of like opinion, eh? Like, fuck. I was like, oh my gosh. So every time you see his face, that's what it's about. Someone walking in the shot or someone like doing something, you know, or someone's recording. Mm. Crack up. So we um. Shall we get to uh, the book of the week, then? Nah, I'm good, man. Um, man, I just feel it. I just realized what the world is up to. Get it? Get it? He's so fair box, eh? Hey. <laughs> there are so many fair box. Well, we won't put that um, camera guy in. <laughs> but, um... We'll start off with the... I said the fuck one. <laughs> Which one's that one? This is a, um, this is a, a little kid who's being told off for saying the F word. I was one of those kids, man. I was like, I remember saying the exact same word. And yeah. the exact same speech was being delivered to me as a kid. And I thought, man, I think that i got to put that up. I don't know if that's a memory lane or it should be the fifth book of the week. Sounds like a memory lane. Memory lane. Oh, okay, what is that for? Memory lane. So... I've tagged this one called Koya. Live band at a wedding. Looks like it's going off. But there's a <laughs> guy wearing a green Mickey Uffle. I've seen him so happy with a green Mickey Uffle like that. <laughs> he just dance. He's just dancing 100, eh? But the energy, sorry. But he's not dancing with anyone else. He's dancing with a four, but he's got a chair. He's dancing with a chair. But it's like lit, eh? Like, man, check out that energy. <laughs> <laughs> but I put that as is that is that Lem Muffs or is that entertainment? <laughs> and um Ty replied Everyone has their one uncle also. And I was like, no, <laughs> my lot, hey. My lot, hey. <laughs> I think um, when you go to these things, you got. I think you got to expect that. Eh? I yeah. think if if it happens, then you're. I think you're, you're 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 lucky to have one of those uncles, you know. <laughs> yeah, straight up, hey. Straight up. Yeah, but if it was one of those uncles, yeah, because it's, it's like, yeah, he's few bots, but. It's normal. It's normal. The family, all every, all the family knows. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
<laughs> That's everyone. Everyone's anticipating the. What? 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 I think the question is, what's Obama's last name? Is he that one? Yeah, I'll I'll share it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was I was actually wondering too. Obama, um, Bin Laden. <laughs> what's Obama's last name? Uh, Bin Laden. He was he killed? Obama, um, Bin Laden. <laughs> 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 Obama's his last name, eh? <laughs> so, so what's his first name? <laughs> so, and then there's another one here of Founders. And I've, I've I watched this like two or three times and I was like I was a bit like man it's a it's a who's the fear poco here? He looked the stairs first and said, Man, I gotta do this and it's a Mikey's um he's about to jump on his track his three wheeler and go down the stairs. Mm. Who's the fear poker here? But yeah, mama mama or sister hey grabs him just before he goes down the stairs and pulls him up. I think he's more he's scared my, to scream. Hey. He's my. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I saw that, I was like, oh, nah, man, I would have got another slip after that, eh? <laughs> yeah, he was like in shock, eh, from the scream, rather than getting pulled. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so those three, um, unless I've missed one. Oh, I think oh. Eric put it up. Eric put up the. It was the lyric all the time. Damn. That's um one of the dirty videos. Oh, that's a good one, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's um sort of off the back of what we talked about last week, huh? Yeah. But it's Zevi, man, that's So was he really talking about Usher in that song? I, mean, I, I think he was imagining his moolie when he was saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll leave it to you. It pray, but <clears throat> when I saw that late entry from Eric, I was like, see, man, he wasn't imagining that show, man. Sorry. There was the other one you put up, the um, the old lady of the machete. And she trips up. Oh, yeah, I didn't get that one. Oh, no, that was the obvious one. Oh, no, don't worry about that one. What is he doing hitting people with the Sabella windows? Well, she swings it, right? She swings at the guy holding the camera. So he's lucky he didn't get. Yeah. Hey. Oh, he's up on the car kanga, that's why. Fuck. Solita se cayó. No, Solita se cayó ya. But the guy holding the camera, she swings the um, <laughs> she pillowed him yeah. at the camera guy. See, let's just see there. Boom. And then she trips. Lucky, man. Yeah. <laughs> but then you put another, you put what's, what's that one of that old man at the, at the checkout? So, oh, yo. He he, he he must go into Costco so often that he went and got a Mickey Affle with the rotisserie barcode on his offal so they didn't have to scan the, the chicken. <laughs> but I think he was mad that he didn't want... He mustn't like people scanning the chicken. He wants them to scan the offal. Because so. you know how the, the, was it the infrared on the, on the laser... This guy had his own uh, He's trying to move the chicken. 
Scan the shirt. Don't scan this. Scan the sh scan my <laughs> shirt. Scan, no, scan me. Yeah. It does work. That is it does. It does. That's pretty on to it, eh? <laughs> That's pretty on, bro. I wonder if they sell these awful <laughs> I would get I know, I know you can get a t shirt with, um, and there's a, one of those barcode things, and yeah, you scan yeah, it yeah. and it plays a song. Oh, yeah? Yeah, That's solid, eh? I thought like that was the cool. G, what's that, the QR QR code? Yeah, like the QR code. Mm. Because I know, like on uh, Snapchat, you can do the QR code. You take a photo of the Snapchat thing, and it comes up oh, with yeah. all the details. <laughs> 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 I remember there's a couple of boys they used to put it on the awful Zoo. Yeah, man, there's a lot of people, eh? Right? Uh, who did you pickles? You got one more. The guy with the um the trailer. Oh, you saw it. Yeah, no one. That's the thing, bro. People are fucking... I don't know, bro. When I saw that, I felt sorry for me. And I didn't know whether to laugh or be mad. <laughs> Mom's car. Mom's car. Mom, you didn't tell me to stop. You didn't tell me to stop. Bro, I would have got out there and sussed the both of them, man. Fuck. <laughs> The, the stupid thing is, he was looking at it. He knew he was going <laughs> to He was holding it. Oh. <laughs> he was looking at the back of the car. I think he was wondering, maybe it's going to stop by itself. Possibly. Mm. I'm giving that my vote to him, man. Yeah. I think the guy's the winner, eh? <laughs> but the way he was like trying to blame someone else, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. You said it's something to stop. <laughs> what the... Man, um, this is not a fair buckle, but oh, what, what, what was it yours too? Was it your vote? Yeah, the trailer, the trailer, oh, the trailer vote. Yeah, Vera. Yeah. I know you got your how, how's your trailer anyway? Man, it's been packed, bro. I haven't had time to try and do any uh work with it, mm. but um, I laughed because eh, Elliot told me he took some um, he took some iron sheets up north because they got a sort of like a um. Home away from home, mm. um, building that they've been working on up north, and he said that um, he bought some five point eight meter um, run sheets that are, you know the iron. It was funny, it was because remember when I bought the trailer, it came with an extended arm, mm. so I could put a packet of timber or whatever up six meters. And he was telling me like just probably about taking the sheet, sheets up north because so we put on a van. You know, like blocks. It's like when you're driving, it just goes like that. And you pull it about, you know, ricking the iron. So he ended up one of the boys' um, trailers, and I think he kind of put it on the back of a lean and strap the shit out of it to the roof. It was funny how you were telling me, but I've been home the whole week, and I was like, hey, you gotta just come and bring out the trailer. And he goes, oh, man, it would have been the same result. I said, well, I told you, you can expand. You can expand the table on it. And he was like, no. <laughs> but he's like, the amount of trouble he went to take the iron yeah. up north. And he could have just borrowed the trailer. He can extend the arm on it. But uh, it's been good. Um, I've got to get a rigid, uh, a waff for it. But I probably will start trying to convert the um, off-road tires onto it mm. and get it a bit higher. And then maybe look at trying to weld, weld a bench on one side of it just so we could take it to the, um, to the park, you know. Everything's on it. Yeah. Oh, that's my goal anyway. That's, that's my little short four goal. I want to try and have it ready to the next holiday. Yeah. Just have it. Put it on. Attach it to the truck and go to the beach. Mm. Everything <clears throat> already on it. The umbrellas, the chairs, the mats, benches, mm. barbecue. Yeah. Mm, nice. Um. Just before we move on, Eric put up a post about, um, man, your places you go to for your kebabs. The Dachau kebabs. Got ram raided, didn't they? Well, not ram raided, the car, I think, accidentally rammed into it. Yeah, I drove past. When was that? Last night. Me and Keaton and Lee were stories last night and we drove past. Saw like it was all battened up. Pretty sad, though. Yeah. 
especially for those cheap, uh, <laughs> affordable um, kebabs you can get there. Mm. I mean, because there's any place out west that has a full on dining, you can sit mm. down and eat at like two in the morning or three in the morning, and then it's it's decent, it's not cold. Yeah. They've got their Punjabi um, remixes going there, eh? the heavy ass bass. Sweet man. Um, should we get to? Should we do the memory lane then? Oh, yo. <laughs> so this is off your your memory lane is off the back of this video you posted up. Hey, I'll, I'll just play the video. Um, it's poor innocent kitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's play it. I scream, I will yell out. What's the matter? What's the word? I said the fuck one. What fuck one? <laughs> you know what does that mean? You know what does that word mean? But why you said it's a bad word? No, I scream, I will yell out. What's the matter? What's the word? I said the fuck one. What fuck one? <laughs> Man, apart from that green fella who was a green copper and the walls were brown, was, that was me getting sold off from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only thing I thought about it, like, mm. as I grew up, because my kids would swear as well, like, random. Mm. But I always consider, like, at least they're angry and they're swearing. Like, I try to see the light and the goodness and, like, you know, the innocence of them just swearing. It wasn't like swearing like every second word. But when I said it as a kid, I said it out of, out of frustration and anger as well. Like I didn't know, like I didn't know it was my parents were when I registered. Like, did they? Oh, here we go. Got a free prize here. We got a free hit. <laughs> because that's what happened. It's like I said that and I was like, I don't like. I still try to process what I said. I was just mad, you know. Well, I choose any incident seen by English swords as a kid in your household. Like, yeah, no, it was a uh, it was a no no in my household. But sure. man, you know how like when you you get some movies from the video store and you come and watch those videos. Even like if it's not just like um, you know how if a sex scene comes up, then you know off to way, mm. off to bed. But also with those movies, with heaps of swearing. Those two, for for us, yeah. I don't know about what happened to you guys, but. If there was like heaps of if words, if there was heaps of fuck words, then nah, go to bed. Yeah, no, nah. I think Rumble Stump at one time, someone played it, my dad <laughs> saw it in the, sorry, he saw it in the, because it was obviously the new release, the cover yeah. was on the thing. I don't know who left it in there, man, fucking push plays on it, my dad I was like, shh, come. <laughs> he was asking you to put it in, I was like, fuck all of me, man, I'm too young. I'm too young, bro, it's not me. Bro, my sister got a girly name. But I was like, fuck, you left, why you, you stupid leave that in there for? I think we were banned for like a month. <laughs> my dad told that guy, didn't ever fucking come back with his videos. But mm -hmm. I think my dad had a point there eh, because my older brother, like he was like six six years older than my sister at the time. And my sister was like, oh, come. And my dad father would go, oh, what? And this, get out of this. So she obviously chose it. My brother was like, oh, yeah, he's the elder. He's obviously old enough to say he's all right to watch it. Mm -hmm. I fucking remember. I remember that movie also. I was like, man, no videos for like a month, man. I was like, fucking silly. Oh, my dad will sit there off the remote, ready to put fast forward. Yeah. When the root part comes. <laughs> 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 hey, root time there, or oh, even if it's just like a kissing scene, eh? Fast oh, forward. Oh, man. Sorry. <laughs> that stuff still happens in our house, man. Whenever there's a kissing scene, I'm like, oh my gosh. Man, the kids are like looking that away. I'm like. <laughs> The next, the next one, I'm gonna throw the TV on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be honest, bro, because my son he loves watching um, Malcolm in the Middle. Oh yeah, bro, and some of the stuff on there, was, I'm like, oh boy, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, this guy, bro, watching the happy as he. <laughs> but even Modern Family, Modern Family, like even Friends, mm. like that comes on at six o'clock, and some of the content on that, I'm like looking at, I'm like. Bro, it's just like, man. Are you a Family Guy fan? Do you like Family Guy? Nah, but my son used to watch it. He used to watch it. Are you talking about man, the cartoon? Is, some of that is worst. The Sorry. worst. 
<laughs> like the character um Quagmire on yeah. Family Guy, he's a, he's a pedophile. <laughs> All right, bro. What are these kids get up to you and they're watching stuff? Like he's a pedophile, but he's one of the he was, he's the next door neighbor. Yeah, and like I think another neighbor had a baby, and they're all at the hospital to to see the newborn baby, and crack my because you know he's he's a pedophile. Yeah. He's, oh, look at that, eighteen already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see that? Oh. <laughs> wow, I was out of it. Sweet man. Uh, speaking of um, Family Guy and uh, and um, what's uh, the program your your son watches? Um, what did he watch? Um, Modern yeah. Family. Yeah, Modern Family and um, Malcolm in the Middle. Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and everybody hates Chris as well. But everybody that, hates Chris. Those are the the programs the kids watch. Oh, mm. repeat! Like if I turn on the Netflix, fuck. That's what. That's what's watching. That's what they've mm. been watching. Okay. Speaking of that, what we've been watching. Let's talk about what have you been watching this week? Oh man, I finally watched that. Um, last goal wins. Oh yeah, yeah. Is it good? Have you seen it? Yeah. Actually, I have to be angry for the first twenty minutes of it, eh? Because in my head, it's like, bro, okay. We've got an opportunity to film something that's obviously based on a true story. But every bit of, like, we shouldn't be doing that. Like, we shouldn't do that. Like, we shouldn't make it funny. Like, it shouldn't be funny. But everything stupid about it, like you can think of, was put in that first 20 minutes, bro. Like, the fuckery with the accents, the fuckery with the minister, the fuckery with the fucking storyline. Like, to me, I was like, what the fuck am I watching? Like I was pretty disappointed, <laughs> yeah. considering that David Fanning and um and Oscar Kylie are on it, mm. and then you got Bueller, and the fact that Bueller thought that the American accent was a legit American accent in my mind, I'm thinking, ah, bro, I don't know who the fuck you've been hanging out with, bro. If it was one of my <laughs> friends, I would have told him, oh, nah, I guy accent guy for you, you look at the screen, like that's the book screen, was like right, mm. but the accent was like pretty shit, eh? To be honest. Like, I thought, I was like, bro, that's, that's a fucking mud accent. But then the storyline was all right. It wasn't too bad. I thought it was the end of so, Man, they could have made it better, you know? It could have been done better. But, yeah, overall, I thought, out of five, I think I'd give it, like, a two and a half. Hmm. I'd expected more, you know? Expected more, but I just thought the humor was a bit... But enough away. And still confusing at the end over the accent, bro. I was like, what the fuck... What's Oscar Kylie's accent trying to project? Like, you eat a fresh or you're fresh, right? You know? But if someone could tell him, like, I could tell my uncles, go tell their friend, like, his accent was was pretty. Must say, have, like, I can't remember. Did he have an American accent? He's passed away. Still won't well, speak like he English. Was on his, um, his TV show, he couldn't tell the difference. Mm. Even when he tried to be broken, it was like. Try harder to be broken if you're going to be broken, but if you're going to be fresh, if, if you're going to project the Kiwi accent, yeah, project, just talk normal. That's your Kiwi accent, but trying to sound American and fob, my mouth, it was like, now nah, it was way off, eh? It was confusing. Mm. I thought the second half was better than the first half. Yeah. Of the movie. No, mm. yeah, I agree, but yeah, man, I was like, hey, this is a pretty, pretty, pretty stink, like, you know. I was just annoyed at the first 20 minutes. Mm. But then there's a, it's a, it's a movie settled, and I was like, oh, okay. Like, pretty good. Uh, all right, but not great, you know what I mean? So, I was disappointed in that. It reminded me of, um, reminded me of Cool Runnings near the end. <laughs> it's similar sort of story, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, being, like, like it's a sport we, we're not really known for, that we're, we're playing, right? And we got a coach that's in the game for so many years. Yeah. Just the same as um, just cool runnings. John yeah. Kenny came, but he's a ex champion uh, bobsledder. Eh? So it's a similar kind of storyline, though. But that's what must. That's what must. An opportunity to, like when this film dropped, 
this one I like I, I noticed. This film dropped. So many hits had come out of Samoa at the time. Didn't use any of them, you know what I mean? You know, the music. The music they could have used so many Samoan songs in the backdrop, whatever. Mm. Nothing. I think it would have made the film a bit better. Mm. They would have given it a more authentic storyline. But yeah. Um Out of ten. What what did I rate it out of ten? Yeah. Oh, probably like a four and a half or a five, very right? like yeah. it was hard to watch, man. It was a hard watch, especially because it's like, like what, what, what country are they? Are they saying this American sound? Why do they all sound like they're coming from Greenland? So, like, <laughs> how can you have like uh, Manorua and then Greenland all in one screen in the in, in the Pacific? Doesn't make sense. Um, I started watching, oh, I watched the end of Survivors. Oh, yeah, was it uh, the trip? Was it did they actually? Yeah, Ferris won. But how he won was probably the... I'm glad I watched the whole thing. Hey, shout out to Josiah for telling me to watch the whole thing. Because it was good, bro. Because he even come for his first haircut on Saturday. And we're talking about it and he was like laughing hard out. He's like, bro, who would have thought, man? Do you know that other video you posted up? Did, did he tell who won? Was it a spoiler? Um, When he announced the winner. Yeah. They're watching the live with Ferris at his house. And then half, I think, most of the cast are there with him. Oh. So, yeah, when they go, I'll now read the votes. So when they're reading the votes, it's usually, you're going home, but they were reading the votes and to see who was going to win it. Mm. But yeah, first, the true form, man. And it was pretty sad because there was an episode I didn't want to watch because um, Jaden already said that Kirby had gone home. So I didn't want to watch that scene. Because, bro, I was backing her to win. Like, I wanted her to win. And then it shows what happens in terms of, like, when Ferris had to send someone home but use his idol, he used it to save himself. So he saved himself from getting voted. But he felt like the competition was that Kirby had to go. And um, it was sad, man, because you know how, like, something's not right and it affects someone emotionally? Mm. You can see, because, yeah, after she left... She tried to say bye to her, but she didn't talk to him. And then he went back to camp, and he started feeling sick. Like he started praying and that, and he just felt mad. Yeah, like he felt. He even I uh, confessed to the camera that I'm starting to doubt whether I should be here because of sending Kirby home. Yep. But then, um, yeah, then, then at the end on the final episode, top two, you, you give your reasons why you feel you deserve to win, and um. Yeah, I think the biggest play he done was lying to the um, lying to everyone that he already had an idol, but he didn't have one. He gave it to one of his gays to get them all the way to the top four, and it proved that it was a fucking good play because everyone thought they both had idols, but only one of them had it. So for like thirty one like you know councils, <laughs> they're like, oh, what? He didn't even have one, <laughs> but he ended up playing it to save himself. So. Nah, in the end, it was you never know. Say they all voted him to win, but mm. they thought like there was a wicked play that he done. Then I was good, 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 good ending, man. I was like, sorry, that was mean. So the first Arab guy, Middle Eastern dude, to ever win uh, Australian Survivor, which is pretty cool. Mm. And then this is the story of like, um, why would the win the, the the winnings? Why would it change your life and that? And then yeah, he gave us gave he gave his reasons why. Winning an Australian Idol and why he could um, show his parents that being Middle Eastern, you don't need to be a cricket player. It was funny, eh? Like saying that you don't need to be a engineer, doctor, lawyer <laughs> to come to some money. Mm. <laughs> I got a lot of the crowd laughing, eh? But now it's good, man. It shows how beautiful Samoa is too with the backdrops and all the places they have, all the challenges as well. So, nah, man, it was a good watch, man. But now that's what I've been watching, us. <laughs> So I mentioned before in the podcast we went to the movies this morning. Took the kids to watch the movie. We watched that um the Godzilla and King is it King Kong and Godzilla? Yeah. New Empire. This is the second one, eh? Yeah. Oh, I think it's a whole bunch of them, eh? Okay. But I think this is the latest one. Mm. But man, you know, like you if you episode under we we love this sort of stuff, eh? We love the biggest <laughs> yeah. versus the biggest thing. Eh? We always yeah. like the sport of boxing. <laughs> but we always love the heavyweight boxers, you know. We always like big things, eh? 
big mm. things going against each other and see who wins. We love we love that sort of stuff, eh? And I think with CGI, the technology that they do with films and you know they make it look real. Yeah. You can have these giants on the screen, man, just having a fight and just smashing everything around them, you know, around them while they're having a fight, you know. And to have like these iconic monsters like King Kong, who's been around for for a whole whole century, yeah. Since the the black and white days, and then you got the Godzilla, who's been around forever in in Japan. You know, if, if you remember those old Godzilla films back in the sixties, yeah. they look fake as like with the puppets and all that kind of stuff. Well, but uh, now we got CGI, we got like technology. It looks real on the big screen, and they can actually do things. Because you know, when you see these big monsters fight on the screen, that's exactly that. Us Islanders, we love those big things fighting each other, man, and. It makes it look real, real. It looks real, and it's good. It's it's cool. It's cool to see. It's cool to watch, and it's it's a fun movie. Eh, if you look at it that way, I mean, yeah, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. The story, you can sort of forgive the storyline along the way because you know there's some um, things. Oh, I don't think that will happen. You know, oh, it's bullshit, of course. But you just gotta. Who cares about it? Let's just have fun. Well, watch the yeah. film. Let's see how these monsters fight. That's what you dare watching the film for, man. Like, forget about the storyline. You just want to watch the monsters fight. Yeah, I think I think it um it delivers it delivers on right. that. Yeah, good so storyline. I'll, I'll give it a, huh? Good storyline. Kind of uh, okay. When it comes to storyline, I think first half of the movie is good. Mm. Then it gets into and and it gets into some bullshit. And you're like, oh, okay, now nah, just <laughs> I'll, I'll just wait for the fight to happen. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that's why you that's why why you're there. You know, so. Now, nah, man, the 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 battle scenes are good. The battle scenes are really good. So, I think you just go watch the movie f- for that. I don't think you do justice on the small screen at the TV at home. I think it's one of those movies you got to watch at the, watch the, the big screen. Nice. Yeah. So now I give it a I give it a five and a half out of ten. Yeah. Five and a half out of ten. Um, the other thing I watched was f- f- thanks to Eric. He posted on uh, our movie chat. Um, a program, Australian program, a TV series called Mister In Between. Um, it's online. You gotta find it online. But it's called Mister In Between. It's three seasons. It's Australian. It's about a hitman. It's about an Australian. He's a hitman, and he works as a bouncer at this um, strip club, and he does these jobs because the guy that owns the strip club he gives him these jobs like these hits. Yeah, these hits. And um, he does the hits, but he also, and during the day, he's got his his daughter, because he split up with his ex, and they have to um, they have to split time with with his daughter. I think he gets daughter in, daughter in the weekends, but he also lives with his his brother, who's got um cerebral palsy, mm. so he can't move and all that. And he's t- talking to him, that kind of stuff. And yeah, but it's a good movie, man. It's a good film. It's a good TV series because it's real and. Yeah, yeah. And the way he talks, like a true Australian, you know, true Australian kind of guy. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting take because he does, he he lives by a code. He lives by like a a moral code. He yeah. he just kills for money and that's it. And and he beats people up if they if they deserve it. Mm. So he has to go. He gets in trouble from the cops and he has to go to these um. These anger management, this anger management course, right? So he's there sitting in a circle with these other dudes doing a anger management course. But he's sitting next to them. But the, and the other dudes are talking about they're there because they beat up their wives, they beat up their kids, you know. Yeah. You know that kind of stuff. And then they come to him, and he beats people up. But he beats up people who 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 deserves it, yeah. rather than random stuff like beating up his kids or beating up his wife or something like that. So he gets asked a question like, Fuck, I'm thinking I'm in the wrong place. I'm here with all these wife beaters. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, no, it's, it's cool. It's a cool program. It's called Mr. In Between. I give it out of 10. I give it an 8. Oh, nice. Well, I'll try and look it up. Mm. Sweet, bro. Um, yeah, running out of time. Dude, shall we do some, some last words? Yeah, right. Um, I 
Like if you wanted to make a shout out, a special birthday shout out tomorrow. Tony Malangama probably turned, what did he turn? He will turn 35. I also um, grew up from the hood. I eventually moved over to um, Brisbane. Quick security. Um, yeah, I've seen him turn. He got a birthday during the week. And um, another shout out to my um, to my cousin Epi, who lost to um, Elder Tora. Uh, Bethany. And sort of a Debbie Downers, um, I actually took questions to a couple of um, security that I've done with Arthur. Um, one we put up in um, Coastal Highway, and um, we needed a girl on the, we needed a lady, just to say, because we had a few female artists and stuff. So, yeah, I got the sad news this morning via text that she passed away up in Darwin. So, um, sort of prayers with her family at the moment, um, sort of shocked. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just grateful that I got to know her in the time that she came back for her her papa's um funeral, and um yeah we had a few hard case um share share our feelings with each other you know it's hard hard because eh? like there's probably only what twelve well what no nah, probably like fourteen years in between us and age, but yeah it's just yeah pretty devastating eh? hearing that she she's been taken from us. But I know she's be she'll be in a good place, you know. She's done really well by my auntie and um and being the oldest granddaughter. But um yeah, my last words is um cherish every moment you can with loved ones, man, and you know, look to fight another day, but also just bear in mind like you know, no one's promised tomorrow. I think with the devastating news that we've had in our family, I mean life can be taken so so quickly, you know, and I just felt after hearing that and sharing some just some thoughts of my cousin this morning. Never would have thought, man, that my beautiful niece would be taken from us. But I know she'll be up, up in, up in heaven wherever she is throwing her seas up. So, um, love you, babe, and I hope you're resting well. But um, yeah, much love to the to the West Auckland family and all our family around the world. Um, yeah, you know what it is. Condolences, bro. Jesus. Um. Yeah, it's one of um, my last words. Actually, um, I got there's a last word just flew up on the on the Impact Clip podcast page r- right now from Simon. Oh, really? <laughs> so before we actually started this podcast episode, I threw up the article where we talked about as a topic the um, the drama was at Emmanuel Samoa, and he's just posted up a comment. He said, "Wow, mm. shots fired!" But you know what? This writer who does not put their name forward is right. The way of the future is Samoan-born players who ply their trade overseas, not Oz and New Zealand-born players who are ex-internationals past their prime. So, nice. So yeah, that's a comment from those who Simon. Yeah, man. And uh, my final words, man. Like you know, we got that empty at the clip um, podcast page on Facebook. If anyone likes what they hear, or wanna doesn't like what they hear on this podcast, they want to say something, throw an article <laughs> up, throw a comment up, and we'll talk about it. We'll blast your name out there. <laughs> blast your name on the podcast and we'll, we'll have a have a talk about the issues that, that come through. So, yeah, man, my last words to thank you for everyone that's listening. Thanks, Nets, for jumping on. Hopefully we'll get others back on. He's not working. He, he's, he was working today, so he couldn't jump on. So hopefully he'll be back next week. But yeah, man, um... Have a good week, brother. You too, Mose. Let's get the fuck out of here.